This is a video about DevOps. In the enterprise. If you work in an enterprise right now, you might be looking at startups and small businesses with some envy because they all seem to be doing amazing things with technology really easily um, that seem like a struggle. DevOps is at the root of this transformation. I'm going to try and explain what DevOps is and some of how you can get there. DevOps is really three technological things. Continuous delivery means that you can test designs quickly and get complex implementations out on live to your users safely, that is, that you know they'll work. Scale means that you can test for the least difficult thing to do and that you can ramp success. That you know what you roll out, you will be able to make work to however many users you can get. And design which means that you can deliver products on the web that facilitate scale and deliver the right functionality to your users. As we can see, design drives scale. Continuous delivery drives better design through testing and feedback from users. Continuous delivery also enables scale in that complexity is easier when broken down. But scale drives continuous delivery as well because scalable things are easier to deploy. So we can see that all of these things are connected. And we're going to dig in to each of them in turn. Continuous delivery is the idea of delivering software to your users, particularly on the web, faster than you do right now. <laughs> so let's look at how things used to be done, sort of pre-continuous delivery ideas. As a product owner, who has an idea, um, and he makes a description of this idea, a story, or uh, some, some description of it that he can give to some developers who can use their computers uh, to turn that into software that some QA people and probably the original product owner can test until they're happy that the idea is complete and then they can give it to some ops people who can get it live. Now, there's obviously a lot of devil in this detail but also here and here. Delivering software this way is hard. Particularly, it can take a long time, maybe even months. So 
how can we do this better? How do the likes of Facebook, Netflix, Amazon, how do these people do this differently that means that they can do what they do? They do do it very differently. They start with the idea of the product owner having an idea of a change. An experiment to conduct. The experiment can then be given to some devs to produce, but it's much easier to make this a small change to a system than a large change. We also have, instead of a lot of manual testing, we have increasingly good automated testing and automated deploy. Your QAs and your ops people are still there but they're helping construct automated tests and automated deployment tools. This means that the little devil is kind of crushed under our boot. That's the plan anyway. One of the key overlooked factors in DevOps is design. Companies doing DevOps are really designing for DevOps. That means that the end products that they make on the web are designed specifically to scale and support continuous delivery. One good example of this is the good old traditional page of results. Where we used to do this, so we'd have some set of results and we'd have pagination at the bottom. One, two, three, ten. When this gets to a few million, this number gets really hard to do. We start hitting the database a lot, eventually we kill the database, we certainly make this page slow to render. Also we realise that this is even useful information. One of the things that we changed doing was making, instead of pagination, a continuous page, a virtual page of results. This is more useful when the user gets to the bottom of the page. We can go get more results from the database. That base can fill them in. And again, when we get down here, this is more useful. It's simpler for the databases to do. The design has to cope with this idea. We have to construct it in the first place around this idea. Another key change has been in how we assemble data for pages and how we deal with what a page looks like. We might have a profile page that's got an image of somebody and it's got their name and it's got their age and where they live and their interests. used to do this is that we try and assemble all this data and deliver it to the client in one go. And again, we end up with a lot of data hitting the database. Maybe we kill the database. We make it difficult to do. One of the key ways we do this now is to break the page up.
pull the personal data from the database over here. Let's pull the interests from a database over here. And let's pull a photo from a database over here. Now, if any one of these databases fails, that means we don't get this piece of information, but maybe that's okay. Or maybe it doesn't fail, maybe it just takes a long time. We're not slowing down the whole page, we're only slowing down whatever part of the page we happen to load. We can choose to design this page in such a way that we can cope with things taking a long time or not being there at all. Building applications to scale might seem kind of obvious, but it's something that as technologists we have struggled with. I think we've learned a lot over the last 10 years of how to do this. So let's go over what scale means. It's through separation. We might start with a web server to receive requests from users on the internet. Soon our application grows beyond simple pages so we need to assemble some of those pages dynamically with app servers. At this point the web server can talk to multiple app servers. Clearly they might have databases so we can shard the databases so that this guy and this guy talk to this one and this guy and this guy talk to this one maybe this one talks to this one and this one maybe this guy talks to this one and we can replicate that data between the two we could add caching. We could add different types of database technology. All of these points are points at which we can cope with changes in load through queuing. Queuing is a key part Every time you have a client, talking to an API, you have the option of the API responding to the client and saying, hey, I'm not ready yet, but popping the request into a queue where it will eventually be processed, but critically you can control how much of that queue is processed. If we have three machines here, we could process three things off the queue at once, say, and the rest, that's fine, they can back up. When these are finished, the API might be able to uh, respond to the client, because this might be an async protocol or maybe the client just polls the API to ask whether this is done yet. Maybe this stuff is actually going into a great big cache. It's all controllable through the introduction of queues. One of the key things is to know that you can do this once you've got a separation one as soon as you have an API here. Yeah. Here, 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 and here. As soon as you have those APIs, you can introduce queues. Using async means that it's much easier to have this flow of communication work without having to poll. The way we used to do things, using threads, and that if we had a four processor machine, requests from the internet 
could very quickly get jammed up. We can only serve four of these at once. What's happening to this one? Absolutely nothing. Using a sync technology, we can deal with this effectively. Like a queue, requests can come in. And when the requests are not blocking, then we can maybe allocate them to a thread to do smaller focused parts of work. So really, it's less work for CPUs. And the key point is that we exploit blocking. So now let's bring it all together. We can start with the people. Now we've got a product owner who can have an idea which he turns into an experiment. His designers, his devs, and his QA people can all cooperate with the ops people to deliver change. Change to a system that is designed to scale and has the right architecture to allow it to happen. With a design that was built to make that scaling as easy as possible. And this results, we hope, in very many happy users. This has been a presentation on DevOps in the enterprise. Thank you.